Public attitudes are measured periodically by election results. However, the news media take the public's pulse on a more regular basis. There are lots of public opinion polls. Every candidate has to have a public opinion poll for every level of office. Newspapers have polls, the media have polls, there are private polls. Everybody's being called every evening, it seems, almost to ask your opinion. My name is Laura. In some sense, I think, takes away any kind of stability from what people in government think. In a poll, you try and sample a very small number of people, say 1,000, to represent the views of a very large population, say 250 to 350 million. If you don't sample very carefully to really get a representative group, you can get very wrong answers. In 1936, Literary Digest mailed more than 10 million ballots to telephone subscribers and automobile owners in an attempt to forecast the winner of that year's presidential election. When the returns were tabulated, the Digest declared Republican candidate Alfred Landon the winner over incumbent President Roosevelt. Mid-century, not everyone had phones, and so you oversampled uh, very wealthy people, and that's why you had a declaration of a Republican victory when, in fact, uh, Roosevelt was going to win. During this same election, George Gallup figured out how to conduct a more accurate poll. George Gallup was a young marketing research a uh, businessman who was, had a new product, a scientific survey. He wanted to get clients. And the way that he went about it was to occasionally ask this question about Roosevelt's public support. He would then issue a press release. These would be published. He'd get a lot of attention, visibility, free advertising for his business. Polls were conducted with small samples of voters, randomly selected. The theory is, is that you write down everyone's name on a chip and throw them all into a big basket and mix them all up and randomly pull out a person's name. The problem is that we can't get a list. There's no list of everybody in the United States. The Census Bureau may have that, but they don't share that with anybody. And so they, we try to do approximations to it. There's a margin of error associated with most polls. They report at 4%, 5%. What you have to understand about that margin of error is that's the margin of error if all of the sampling and all the other things they do in terms of wording questions don't bias their answers in any way. That's under the best possible case. And I don't think a lot of people understand that about polls. If your sample goes wrong, if you don't get a, a particular part of the population, or if you've worded a question in a way that leads people to one answer over another, uh, the polls can become really unreliable, and those margin of error numbers are meaningless. You might as well double or triple them.